I'm Dave Rett, and let's take a look at what happens if you have transformer split and you have an isolation transformer going to the front of house console and an isolation transformer going to the monitor console. If one of those consoles is turned off, will it impact the other console? What if you have a hardwire split and you have the same scenario? If one console is turned off, will it impact the other console? Is it possible for a piece of gear to impact something else just because the inputs are wired together through a transformer or hardwired? And then we'll take a look at some other gear besides consoles. Let's take a look at the setup here. I've got a tone generator set at 150 hertz right here. And the output of that tone generator is going into the sound tools mic swapper. It allows me to, it's a mic swapper, but I can go either way. So I can have two inputs with a single out or two outs with a single in uh, or two ins and two outs in reverse. So right now I've got it set up such that in the A1, B2 position, it's running the signal generator into channel one here and channel one here on the X32 and the Yamaha. When I go to the second position, it runs a signal into the mic splitter, this uh, radial JS3 transformer ISO box, and it goes into the input and the two outputs, the isolation out goes to channel two here and the other isolation out goes to channel two here. So we're able to energize hardwire split that goes to channel one or a transformer split that goes to channels two on both consoles. This mic switcher here allows us to monitor one or the other consoles. In the A position, we can listen to the output of the X32. In the B position, we can listen to the output of the Yamaha CL1. Go into this little console, out of this little console, into this small Bose speaker. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and bring up this 150 hertz tone. And this right here is the hardwire split running into both consoles. Now I've got this signal generator set amplitude at 16 volts. Now it's at 16 volts peak to peak. It would be eight volts peak and 0.7 times eight is about 5.6 volts or so RMS and um, you can look that up 5.6 volts RMS whatever that is in dBU that's going into both consoles this one's sitting at minus 12 they're both sitting at uh, approximately minus 12 on their meters and um, we are listening to Yamaha console and the hardwire split if I switch this here that is the X32. Both consoles sound fine. What happens if we listen to the X32 and we turn off power to the Yamaha console? No change whatsoever. Powering down the Yamaha console on a hardwire split does not affect the sound coming out of the Behringer X32. Now we're coming out of the output of the console. This would be the equivalent of having a DJ or something or some line level input um, going into your snake system, hitting both consoles, hardwire split, and you turn one console off. Maybe you're not using the monitor console, you're just using the front of house and you've uh, turned it off and you're not using a digital splitter system. What happens if we do the opposite? Let's go ahead and listen to the Yamaha console and we'll PFL that. And now we'll shut off the X32. Pretty sure you can hear that. That would probably be undesirable for that to happen to whatever signal we're sending. Let's turn the X32 on. And it is good again. So when the X32 is turned off, it is loading down the line on a hardwire split. What happens with a transformer split? Will a transformer ISO isolate the console such that one can be turned off and not affect the other? Let's go ahead and check that out. So I'm gonna switch to the ISO split on channel two and we will PFL channel two here. 
and that's the Yamaha. And just to show you that this is the go over here with PFL 1002. And now we're listening to the ISO split going through the JS3. And just to show you that works, I'm going to unplug it and going through the transformer split. Well, the Yamaha console didn't affect the hardware split, so it's not going to affect the passive split. So I'm not even going to bother with that. What do you think is going to happen when I turn off this X32? Everything's going to mute. And the reason is I didn't switch over to listen to the Yamaha. So we'll go ahead and wait till that fires back up again. I tricked myself there. And let's go ahead and put it on the Yamaha. And now for the big reveal, ISO split. Turning off the X32. Now, it's not as bad as it was with the hardware split. And we can listen to that by going here. There's a little less distortion. It's not quite as fuzzy, but it's still impacting through the passive transformer split. The transformers pass AC. Any loading will pass through the transformer just as it passes through a, a wire or very similar. Um, some of the losses in the transformer cause this not to be a perfect loading. It's not able to load it quite as well. What do other pieces of gear do? It's common to have old analog boards run through act fruit passive splitters and transformer splitters. Where else do we run multiple splits? Um, sometimes in rack gear, we might drive multiple pieces of rack gear. We might have it going to out of the console to um, something that drives a balcony fill and something that drives another fill. It might not be all digitally split. A lot of this modern stuff out there, we're running everything in the digital domain where it's not going to impact it. But a lot of analog gear out there and a lot of uh, copper splits are happening. What happens with a little analog console? This Xenix. Nothing. So this console is not um, loading it down like the X32 is, even though they're both Behringer consoles. It's not manufacturer dependent. Let's take a look at this Drummer 1960 um, tube compressor I have sitting around here and uh, see what happens when I plug into that. Now this has actually got two sets of input. It's got a mic input and a line input for each channel. So let's try the line input. Nothing. Let's try the mic input. There's another thing that uh, loads it down. And for our last two pieces of gear, I've got a Lab Groupin P6400. Actually, there's an L Acoustics LA8, but an amplifier. We, a lot of times, will drive multiple amps off the output of a console. So it'd be important to not have the con amplifiers dragged down if you turned a few amps off, if you wanted to shut down a zone. Let's make sure that's not an issue. And no problem with the lab grouping. That's good news. We really would not want this. With some of this gear, it's more important than with others. And I would say amplifiers being able to be shut off is important. But that's an older amp. Let's try this um, guy right here. This is a PowerSoft X4 Class D amp. So now we're getting into something that's more modern and may have an issue. Let's find out. Oh, 
if I plug it into the AES, it doesn't like it at all. Um, I thought I heard a little something, but I don't. If it is there, it's minute. And um, again, we're driving pretty hot. So, out of today's adventure, plugging into gear that's off may or may not be an issue. And it doesn't seem to be, it's not manufacturer oriented. It's not only consoles, amps don't do it. I wouldn't really depend and be confident that any piece of gear is worthy of being plugged in while powered off unless I've tested it. And I would tend not to do it after doing this because just because we don't hear it, I have measured there are slight drops as we plug in. If something's not being used, do we really need that drop? And maybe it's cumulative as well. I'm not gonna go too much farther down this road, but it is interesting to know. And another tool in your toolbox, um, a gremlin that can bite you if you're unaware and you have cables plugged in to gear that's not powered up. Cool, cool. Hope you find it interesting.